brothers and sisters, what a great pleasure it is for us to be able to gather this evening. And uh, it gives me personally very great pleasure, both as Rector of the Basilica of Our Lady and as Dean of Wellington, to welcome you here from all over Wellington Deanery to honor our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and to ask his blessing upon our, our whole community as we carry Christ through the streets of our city in just a, a short while. It is also a great honor for us to be able to celebrate this evening with His Excellency Bishop Eustrichi, who was ordained to the priesthood 65 years ago today. Your Excellency, ad multis My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. So 
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars, corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the Book of the Covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. The word of the Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, 
Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good for us to be here. How wonderful it is that so many of us are able to gather from so many parishes to celebrate this Eucharist and to go on procession through the streets of this city with our Lord. It is wonderful for us to be in this beautiful basilica especially for those of us who usually worship in humbler churches on Sunday morning. It is wonderful to be here. It is uplifting to hear beautiful hymns being sung, to have the liturgy celebrated reverently. There is much here that can raise our hearts at this time. But while we know that in this church we are having a wonderful experience, it is also no secret that outside the world it's not so easy to feel the consolations of the glory of God. We know that in our world around us there is a gloom, the darkness of a new paganism, that is creeping more and more into our world, a darkness that makes it harder and harder for us to live as faithful Christians, and how painful it is to see many of our brothers and sisters in Christ hide their faith or compromise with our world. Our world claims to value diversity and yet when it sees us and our faith and our way of life, it seems to demand uniformity. There is something about living in this world that doesn't sit right for us who are Christians trying to follow our Lord in a world that in many ways is messed up. And to the world around us, there's something not right about us, about what we believe, and about how we live. In many ways, I think we are moving more and more toward the kind of world that the early Christians lived in in the Roman Empire. Recently, I read a sermon by St. John Henry Newman 
the great convert of the 19th century. The sermon was called The Kingdom of the Saints. And in that sermon, he imagined what it would have been like for the Roman emperor to go to visit different parts of his empire and to discover that in each town, a rival monarchy had been set up that there were people who swore allegiance to another king. And even though they were generally law-abiding people, they would not go along with the religion of the empire. They would disobey the law insofar as their religion demanded it of them. And most surprising of all, these people with a different allegiance were not revolutionaries. They did not wage war or, you know, commit any kind of insurrection. In fact, they were quite willing, many of them, to be put to death. And so is the case with us. How strange it must be for people around us to think there's a certain way to live and to find us with a different allegiance and yet we are good citizens. We realize that every time we have a food drive, every time there's a refugee crisis, who takes care of those in need? We do. And yet we are looked on with suspicion. It is a strange way to live, to belong to a kingdom within another world. In the Old Testament, we heard about how the people of God were formed. The law was read to them. They said, we will do whatever the Lord God commands of us. And then they were sealed as his people when the blood was sprinkled on the altar and on them. And they became a people, a nation, of kings and priests, and yet they broke that covenant. But we, who live as citizens of our own kingdom, as people of the new covenant, the people of God who live in this world, we belong to a different covenant, one that is eternal, one that has been established by our High Priest, Jesus Christ. And not only do we say that we will do whatever he commands us, but we are sprinkled with his blood and made his people, his people who have to live in this world. The blood of the Old Covenant was not able to make the people faithful in the midst of a fallen world. But in our covenant, in our kingdom, the kingdom of the saints, we do have the grace to remain faithful to Christ. He nourishes us with a sacrament, the sacrament of the Eucharist, where he gives us his own body and blood. He makes himself a gift. He makes himself our food. Our God knows that we live in a challenging time, in a world that is opposed to him. But he does not make us rely on our own strength. The new covenant, Pope Benedict XVI said, is not one that is founded on human fragility. Instead, it is based on the obedience of the Son. We have a world that would try and make us disobey God, to stray, to renounce our citizenship in the kingdom of the saints. But Christ gives us in the Eucharist whatever we need to be faithful to him, just as the martyrs in old times, and indeed in more recent times in other countries, 
just as they held fast to Christ because they had the Eucharist, so too we know that we have the Eucharist to make us saints. The Eucharist is a sign of unity. Just as many grains were ground together to make the bread that we will use, just as many clusters of grapes were crushed to make the wine that we will use in this Mass, and they are made one, so too we are made one in the Eucharist. The Eucharistic bread is broken and divided among us in order to draw us together, to unite us with the body of Christ that is the Church. And the Eucharist that we receive is truly and substantially the body and blood of Christ. And when we receive him, we have a deeper share in his life. Our union with him is strengthened. We receive an increase in charity, a growth in friendship with our Lord. We are given the strength to say no to sin and to be faithful to the covenant. We are citizens of the church, the kingdom of the saints. We are people of the Eucharist, united to the Lord by this sacrament. And we go forward with him, and he goes forward with us through this life. Whether we are on our way to the Garden of Olives, or whether we're on our way to glory, it is the Lord who is with us through the Eucharist. To him be glory and might, now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With humble and faithful hearts, let us ask God, our guide and protector, to be mindful of us in our need. That our Holy Father and all bishops in union with him will always guide us in the ways of holiness and help us to live as true members of the mystical body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all Catholic Christians 
may grow in their understanding of and love for and devotion to the real and abiding presence of Christ in the great gift of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord that national, provincial, and local government officials will seek to satisfy the human longing for peace and justice and defend the rights and dignity of all people from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the Good Shepherd will guide and bless leaders of our church, especially His Excellency Bishop Eustrichi, as he celebrates 65 years of priestly ordination today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will establish true and lasting peace in our world and that he will comfort those affected by warfare or oppression, especially in Ukraine, Africa, and the Middle East. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the power of Christ, risen from the dead, may give comfort and healing to all those who are suffering, especially the sick of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially our deceased loved ones and benefactors. We pray to the Lord. We ask our Blessed Lady, who brought to this world the great gift of God made man, to pray with us and pray for us as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end. Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, 
whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, 
a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord,
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of the divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. I think I uh, definitely speak for the other priests here when I am say that we are astounded and incredibly edified to see how many of you have come out this evening. Uh, thank you very, very much. A uh, big thank you to the Knights of Columbus who have uh, done uh, the lion's share of the organizing and the behind the scenes work and uh, a lot of haggling with city officials to, uh, to make this evening possible. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Thank you to uh, the altar servers from various parishes in the deanery who have shown up this evening and who will uh, all be taking part in one form or another in the procession. Thank you to the almost full choir that showed out this evening. And a uh, big thank you to my brother priests uh, from around the, uh, the Wellington Deanery who are here this evening, as well as our deacon and one of our seminarians, Joseph Mendonca. Ladies and gentlemen, following the closing hymn, please just be seated. And uh, when we uh, do come out and expose the Blessed Sacrament, kneel and wait for instructions as to when to, uh, to follow out of the church for the procession. The Lord be with you. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Blessed be God. Blessed be this holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, O God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be this most sacred heart. Blessed be this most sacred heart. Blessed be this most precious blood. Blessed be this most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit the Barbary. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Holy Immaculate Conception. Blessed be the Holy Immaculate Conception. Blessed be the Holy Immaculate Conception. Blessed be the name of Mary.
this Corpus Christi procession. Jesus told us, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father. Let us never forget that. God bless all of you.